<laughs> what Jesus said turned Judaism upside down. It challenged people where they were at, how they lived, and what they were thinking that God wanted from them. Jesus came that there might be light brought into a place of darkness that religion had so distorted the image of God that they had even begun to confine him into a box and to design it so that he would be controlled by the religious scribes and Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priesthood that was in that day more concerned that one should die than the whole nation perish so that there would still be a people of God to serve God as though God were distant and he needed to have people that were around so that they could still survive and be there for when he decided to quote unquote intervene again but since he hadn't been so long the priesthood had even got out of the way to create false miracles like with the Maccabean revolt and saying that the oil lasted for so long and to begin to change things from the incorruptible image of God taking the menorah the seven branch menorah of all things and making it into nine and then calling it eight because there's one that's a shamash how ridiculous so what we see is Jesus making a distinction and a separation from religion to himself. He is not saying the scribes and the Pharisees. He's not saying to the law and the prophets. He's saying, I say unto you. And that's such a shocking statement for anyone who knows that God gave his law to the people to become the people of God. But he's telling them, I say unto you. You have heard it said, but I say unto you. And so when Jesus spoke in Matthew chapter 5 through 8, he was talking to not just the disciples, but to the people, because he was making a separation between what they thought they knew and what God really meant, what God was saying, because God now was speaking to them. The Son of God had come, the Son of Man, the Messiah. And Jesus said, I'm not interested in what you think you know. I'm not interested in what you know. I'm telling you, I say unto you. And so then he warned them that at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, that if they did not do these things, he told them what the consequences were. But if he said, if you do these things, then this will happen. But he also made a statement that not everyone who claimed to come in his name, that were casting out demons, that were doing all marvelous works in his name, would know him or that he would know them because they were workers of unrighteousness. So Jesus made a blessing and blessed the people for who they were, poor in spirit, mourning, the meek, those that were hungry for righteousness, those that were looking, those that were persecuted for righteousness sake and those that were persecuted for his name's sake. And he blessed them for that. He thanked them. He caused God to move in their lives in a more powerful way than they've ever known before. But likewise, he said that these are what you are. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are the people of God. Now, don't get mistaken, though. Don't misunderstand. I'm not coming to destroy the law and the prophets. I'm coming to fulfill. And I'm going to show how, why, and what goes on with the law. It's not about law or grace. It's not about grace or law. It's not about law and grace. But it's about how grace fulfills law. The law is in effect because it does cause certain aspects of the reality of what you must do to be accomplished in you. Because if you don't, it will condemn you. If you don't live up to what the law requires of you, then the punishment is set in stone. So likewise, we come to a place where Jesus says, now, in verse 20, For I say unto you, who's speaking? Jesus that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Jesus calls everyone on the carpet. The religious leaders of their day were perfect according to the law that they had determined the interpretation thereof. Even Paul said, as far as the law, guiltless. But Jesus says that the righteousness that he expects must exceed that, must go beyond what the scribes and the Pharisees claimed to have, or else they could not enter the kingdom of heaven. The people were dismayed in some ways. They were shocked because everyone knew the scribes and the Pharisees were automatically ushered into the kingdom of heaven. They even had said so, that they were 
the greatest or they wanted to be into certain positions of authority and they spoke as though God had given them the, that authority. Even as today when we say, oh, I had the Holy Spirit, so I can now command authority. I can now dictate who's saved and who's not. Can I not? I have been given who to judge and who not to judge. Can I not judge? I have been told that because I have the Holy Spirit, I can condemn those, I can bless those, I can curse those. Can I not? No! Don't you get it? Just because you have the ability doesn't mean you're told to go do it. You're supposed to ask God to do it for you. And likewise, this is what Jesus is saying to the people. Accept your righteousness, exceed the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven, because they can't make it either. You can't do it yourself. But in Jesus, he can. He can accomplish and fulfill that which you cannot do for yourself. The law will condemn you. The authority you think you have will condemn you. The power you think you have will condemn you, because all of it, all that you are, that you've ever been given from God, whether grace, salvation, authority, the Holy Spirit, gifts and abilities, and all of the ministry that you think that you have in your hands, was all meant to show and reveal Jesus, because Jesus came to show and reveal the Father. And he said, that's why you can't enter the kingdom of heaven, because the Father would annihilate you in your own righteousness. He would destroy you in your own concept of what you think is perfect. Because God is saying, I exist in a place where you cannot come. I am so perfect that you have to be perfect in order to be in my place. I am like a fire, and if you're kindling, you'll be consumed. So you have to have a new nature. You have to be changed. So Jesus isn't making something that's new. He isn't changing anything that's been said. He is demonstrating what the criteria he has said is. And he is setting it so no one can achieve it of their own self. Listen carefully, because what you are determining in this devotional, devotional way is what did Jesus say? Did he mean what he said? Are you interpreting it and saying, oh, well, since we can't apply it, you know, grace applies and, you know, I don't have to do it. No, you don't get it. I say unto you, remember, this is Jesus talking to you right now. I pay attention. Accept your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, he shall in no case enter into the kingdom of God. What's that mean to you? I would take it serious. Because you see, when we're given grace, we say, oh, well, by grace are you saved, and that of yourself, lest any man should boast so that the works of righteousness would be accomplished in you, that you, know, you wouldn't have to be able to boast so that God would get the glory. Wait a minute. But what about work out your salvation with fear and trembling? Why is it fear and trembling? Because your righteousness, your right actions, your right doing, the point that God is trying to make to you is that you better be in relationship with God. You better be able to hear His voice. You better know what God is saying to you because if you don't, then you're choosing a righteousness that is of religion and of man-made and you're adapting yourself to what you've heard and what you've seen and what you feel like as opposed to what Jesus said. Remember, the Son of God has come to reveal to you what the Son of Man has demonstrated He can do. Because He lived it. He did it. He accomplished it. How? Why? For what purpose? You are doing the same right now as you are the way you are. You are becoming a Son of God. You must do as Jesus said. Jesus had intimate personal relationship with His Father. He saw His Father. He heard His Father. He did what His Father said. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And He walked according to the ability that the Holy Spirit gave Him to do, to hear God speak. You today have to do the same. Your righteousness, your perfection has to exceed the scribes and the Pharisees. It has to exceed the Mormons you see that look like they're so family-oriented. It has to exceed the Catholics that are so humble or so guilt who knows, but has to exceed anybody that you put in a perfection state that you think is so holy and so righteous that you just bow down and go, oh, amazing. No, you have to be beyond that. You have to be literally in God in order to get to God. And you have to be perfect in order to be in the in the same space as perfection, or else perfection will consume you. And so Jesus says to you today, are you doing what I said? Have you done what I said? Are you listening now to what Jesus said? Because if you think you're perfect, 
I'll take you to a scribe and a Pharisee someday. If you meet me, and I'll take you to Israel. Well, maybe I won't take you, but we'll meet in Israel. And you'll see what living in a lifestyle like that can be. And it's wonderful. Don't get me wrong. It's kind of neat. Yeah, we do this, we do that. We got every day, all day long, planned out and programmed. So that we're all cookie cutters. We all look the same. But the reality is God can speak to you to cause you to do what Jesus said if you will listen. So are you listening to what Jesus said? Because Jesus said, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Do you want to enter into the kingdom of heaven? Then do what Jesus said.